listen, we're not ready You're to... on, Slan. But our ether cams aren't mounted in Start the... talking. But... And... Er... Hello and good morning, sports fans. I'm Slam Sterling, voice of the void, coming to you live today from a no-gravity nexus mid-space in the binary star system Kalaxon and Calabar. Now, moments from now, on the luminous surface of this artificial asteroid, we're going to be witnessing what promises to be some incredible action in this ball blazer championship. I'm sorry for the picture delay, and I hope that you'll bear with us as our camera droids mount the ether cams in our players' rotofoils. Now with me here today is someone who really needs no introduction. Truly one of the great master blazers of all time, our Mr. Kipling. He'll be here filling us in on some of the details in his final face-off of the season. It is indeed a rare treat to have him with us, and he's certainly the man to do the job. With those three eyes, he just doesn't miss a trick. Welcome, Armister. Thanks, Slan. It's great to be here. Uh, as you know, Armister, 3097 has shaped up as a phenomenal year for ball blazing. Huh? Indeed it has, Slan. This is the first time that an Earthling has made it into the finals. This is a very new sport for the planet Earth, and many Earthlings, amazingly enough, aren't yet familiar with the game. It is incredible, and I do think that expert as he is, Earthling Crockett has an uphill battle to fight here today. Some say he just may not have the refined concentration of his opponent, Zata of Minotaur. Now he is some kind of blazer. You betcha. I couldn't agree with you more, Armister. You know, Armister, while we're waiting for the tournament to begin, my producers tell me we have a pre-recorded interstellar ball blazer conference demonstration to either cast. But I think particularly some of our Earthlings who are new to the sport might be interested in seeing, huh? A stellar notion slam. What do you say we beam in? Ah, yes, the old familiar double grid method of ether casting. Familiar to some, Armistice, but for those of you out there who haven't seen the game before, well, it does take some getting used to. What we have here are both players' views of the grid. And so that our audience can really be part of the action, we've mounted ether cams inside the players' rotofoils. How about that? Now, rotofoils are sort of like old fashioned bumper cars that each player pilots around the grid. Now, each player on the grid is sitting in either a purple or an orange rotofoil. If you're on the top screen, you're in purple and facing your opponent in orange. And likewise, if your view is the bottom screen, you're in orange and facing your opponent's purple rotofoil. Your rotofoil can move in any direction. Now, let's watch Purple's view from the top. He moves left, zips right, left again, then backwards, and then forward downfield, hitting the electro boundary and jamming the corner of the grid. Now, Purple moves left again, sights his goal, and he's moving back into position at center grid. So remember, if you're placing your bets on the blazer piloting the purple rotofoil, you can watch his perspective at the top, and if you're pulling for orange, keep an eye on the bottom. I might just say, Slan, that the grid is fairly narrow, and those electro boundaries are a technological blessing. They really keep us blazers from spinning off into the far reaches. All righty, now a practice point. Keep an eye on Purple's view above as he moves downfield to get the ball on the horizon. Watch and listen as he grabs the ball. It buzzes when he's close and turns the color of his rotofoil when it's under his control. Now, he's moving right along the grid to his goal. Zooms again, centering his shot between the goalposts. He blasts the ball, sinking it for two points. He's hurled back behind his opponent in orange from the force of his shot. If I remember correctly, Slan, next we'll see a demonstration of some of the plays that would surely tax the soul of any blazer in a real fast-paced match. So right you are, Arbister. First, keep an eye on Orange's view at the bottom as our players face off. Now the ball whips in, and it's a quick catch by Orange. Now, if you watch Purple's top perspective, you'll see him demonstrating the roto snap. Pay close attention, and you'll see a dizzying display of 90-degree turns. Round and round Orange. Sound is really the key here. That was the buzz of the ball, and Purple moves in to blast it out of the orange rotofoil's control. The ball is up for grabs, and Purple sails after it. He takes control, the ball turns Purple, and he heads down grid to line up a shot between the goalposts. Purple takes his shot, and he makes it! You know, in a real game, the pace becomes positively meteoric, and the real key is concentration, concent... Hey, excuse me, Arbister, but I just got word that the 3097 Ball Blazer Championship is about to begin. The Earthling Crockett, an impressive new contender, is piling the purple rotofoil, and you'll be seeing the action just as he sees it on the top half of the screen. His opponent, Zarta of the Minotaur system, who can really dish it out, is the heavy favorite here today. He's in the orange rotofoil, and you'll be watching his point of view from the bottom. And in the background, we're hearing the ceremonial song of the grid. 
Ah, it still gives me goose flesh, Slan. Are you ready? Well, here we go. The ball blasts in. Crockett's on the move. Listen to that. He's got the ball. Fix out Sardin. He's bolting down the side of the field. He's moving in to set up an angle shot. No! He cuts right. He shoots. It's an incredible over-the-horizon effort by Crockett. Three fast points for the Earthlings. Oh, Slan, a tremendous opening play by Crockett. So right you are, Arbister. And he does want to sink those OTH shots in before the goalposts start to shrink later on in the game. Looks like sardin has got tough competition on the grid today. And they're facing off again. Here comes the ball, it's neck and neck. Zarda gets it, slips away and lets it fly as Crockett Roto snaps to the side. Zarda blasts over the horizon, he makes it! Tying up the score, three to three. An impressive early warning to the Earthling. Now we're at the third face off of this championship game. Here's the ball, Zarda's headed for it and gains control. Crockett blasts, it's flying across the field, they're off like a shot. Zarda beating on Crockett, but Crockett snaps around Zarda. Blasts again, bounces off the end and recovers to cut in front of Zarda. Now Zarda cuts in right, closes in, blasts, he sends a free ball flying. Crockett grabs it at the wall and slips away. Crockett shoots, misses inside, and Zarda recovers the ball. It's Zarda downfield. Crockett rails from the right. Zarda hangs on and cuts back. Crockett viciously holding Zarda back against his own goal. Blasting, blasting away. The action here today is incredible. Ha ha ha. Slan, I think this is the kind of action the universe tunes in to see. And action is what they're getting. What a sight. What a fight, Slan. What highly evolved nervous systems, Arbister. Just keeping track of the goal. Your orientation during a roto snap it's enough to smash any ordinary big flag. Blast forward, Slan. That's the key. Blast forward and concentrate. Okay, now Crockett's controlling the ball. He shoots blind, he misses. Zarda zips ahead, recovers in front of his goal, and pulls a back wall, Charlie. Now Zarda's dribbling the ball, the mark of a true master blazer. He captures it, closes in, and taking no chances, slams it through for a tremendous two-point power play. <laughs> Positively galactic, oh my. <sighs> Exhilarating play. Yeah, it looks like Zarda may have the laser's edge. Huh? Master blazer Arbuster Kipling for laser light. When the blazing heat of working the grids gets to me, I chase my thirst with Laser Light. Laser Light, the toast of the galaxies and the official sponsor of the 3097 Interstellar Ball Blazer Championship Games. And welcome back. To recap while we were gone, Zarda has pulled dramatically ahead, scoring twice against Crockett, putting four more big points up on the board, pushing his total to nine. This could spell the end for the Earthling. He is dangerously close to a shutout. Okay, they're facing off again, and we're moving close to the end of the game. And here's the ball. Crockett's headed for it, grabs it, breaks away. Behind 9-1, and he's still pushing. Zarda zooms ahead of Crockett, blocking Crockett's line of fire. Crockett fades back. Zarda tries to steal, but Crockett slips back, and he fires. It's no goal, and he recovers the ball at sonic speed. Now he's setting up again. He fires. It's good. A 3.0 OT8 shot for Crockett. Amazing slam, simply amazing. But time is running out. Yes, time is running out. All Crockett needs is one more point to force this game with a sudden death overtime. Here's the ball. Zarda's on it, but he doesn't capture it. It looks like a power play. He captures the ball, fires, and misses. Now Crockett's after it. He picks it up. Zarda jams Crockett, but the Earthling gets off a shot. It misses. Incredible. Crockett's got the ball. The whistle blows. Crockett spins out an agonizing defeat. I just can't believe it. I'm sure he's wishing now he had just another microsecond left on the clock. Slan, I'm terribly impressed by Crockett's showing here today. Zarta was, of course, favored for victory and certainly didn't disappoint his fans. But the Earthling's strong showing demonstrates that his species is certainly shaping up to be major contenders in this spot. Well said, Arbister Kipling. Thank you so much. This is Slan Sterling, voice of the void, returning it out to your local Ethercast. We'll see you here next season. Same asteroid, same game. Ball Blazer, the video sport. This Ethercast is presented by authority of the Interstellar Ball Blazer Conference. Any rebroadcast or other use of the accounts of this game is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent of the Interstellar Ball Blazer Conference.